in Luke chapter uh, 4, Isa alayhi salam will quote from Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 20 when he's being tempted by Satan according to the Gospel of, uh, of Luke. And he says to Satan, Eth Adonai Elohecha Tira. Very interesting. Hebrew is not an inflected language. There's no Mu'arab, like we have in Arabic. Sometimes we say Muslimun, Musliman, Muslimin, right? It's inflected, whether it's a nominative or accusative or genitive. But biblical Hebrew was no longer inflected. Maybe ancient Paleo Hebrew was, according to many linguists. But biblical Hebrew isn't, so it's very clear the word order is very important. You have verb, you have subject and object. But here in Deuteronomy 10.30, quoted by Jesus in Luke chapter 4, the direct object is brought to the very beginning of the sentence because there is a direct object marker in Hebrew. What's the effect of bringing the, the, the direct object to the beginning of a sentence? This maf'ul muqaddam it's called. It denotes emphasis and exclusivity. For example, in Al-Fatiha, we don't say na'buduka wa nasta'inuka. We worship you and we ask you for help. We say iyyaka na'budu. We bring the direct object forward, which denotes exclusivity and emphasis. So here Isa alayhi salam is saying, Eth Adonai, the Lord your God only will you fear, O to, and him alone, ta'avud, you will worship only the Lord your God. Now, Luke translates this verse into Greek as proskune says kurian tan theon su, that you must revere the Lord your God, tan theon, definite article on God again. Tan theon means the God. Isa alayhi salam is never called ha theos, God with a definite article, anywhere in the New Testament. And then he says kai o tu mano latreoses, and to him alone will you render worship. Now, in Koine Greek, in New Testament Greek, there are two words for worship used in the New Testament. The first word is proskuneo, which is a compound word that comes from the preposition pros, which means toward, and the word kuon, which means a dog. What do dogs do when they see their masters? They kiss their hands. So in the New Testament says that the disciples worshipped Jesus, usually how Christians will translate proskuneo, when the disciples quote-unquote worshipped Jesus, like the King James Version says that, the Greek is proskuneo, which means they revered him, they respected him, they kissed his hand. In John chapter 9, Jesus heals a blind man. He sees him in the temple of Solomon later. And this man thanks Jesus, and the Greek says he made proskuneo towards him. Are we really to believe that a Jewish man inside the temple of Solomon is worshipping Jesus as God and committing adult, uh, uh, idolatry? No. In fact, in the Bible, the same verb is used to show respect to Jewish high priests and angels. They are not being worshipped as God. The Hebrew avad, the, the verb avad, the cognate is abada ya'budu, is translated as latreo in Greek. And this is the verb for worship that is only due to God. It is never used of Isa alayhi salam in the New Testament. In fact, Christ himself says in Luke chapter 4, verse 8, Kai autu manu latreuses, and him alone, meaning God, will you render worship as God, because he is the only God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 